Like he means like, are are you going to help him now in the in the last? Are months? you gonna go in when you see Behrman or Hadja? Are you just gonna crash into them? Ah, sorry, <laughs> not crash, not crash. We 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 have respect. And if you respect. do that by accident, they will look yeah. at this podcast and they'll say, no, "See, no, no, yeah, no, no, I not cra- <laughs> no crash." <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome to the F1 Feeder Series podcast, your guide to keeping up to date on everything in the junior single-seater world. I'm your host, Jim Kimberley, and those three hellos in my introduction are for a very special occasion because for the first time on the podcast, there are three F3 drivers joining me. Not only that, but I would consider all three of them prominent names in the feeder series world with EuroCup and Freca titles and uh, Formula 2 podium visits as some of their accolades. And I wasn't sure with all of that who to introduce first, so I've decided to go in age order. Some might call it wisdom order if you want to be more positive. Uh, so. Let me first get round to somebody who's well-versed in GP3, Formula 2, and of course, Formula 3, and a member of the Sauber Junior team. Welcome to the podcast, Juan Manuel Correa. Thank you, Jim. Very happy to be here. Finally, we get to do it. Yeah, it's been a while. Thank you so much for your willingness to do this. And I need to also give a quick shout out to uh, to JM because he dragged his ART teammates along as well. That was something that... You've been organizing. You're going to be a team owner someday, I think, Jim, with that sort of organization. Yes. Yes, I, I had to. Well, to, to be fair, it wasn't um, difficult to convince them. I think they were keen to come as well. So thank you for, for coming, guys. <laughs> they want to follow in your footsteps. That's what I'm hearing. But next up is a F3 rookie in 2022. But that didn't stop him from a podium finish on his feature race debut. He dominated Freca last year with eight wins from 20 races to take the title. Great to have you with us, Gregoire Saucy. Hello, Jim. Uh, yeah, thank you to, for the invitation. And uh, I'm really happy to be there. Yeah, it's great to have you here. It wasn't so much of an invitation. I think uh, you just wanted to follow in JM, James footsteps and you didn't want to let him have all of the limelight to himself, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, directly when GM, uh, Uncle GM uh, said to me, uh, said to, me to, to come there, I heard directly come there. <laughs> well... We'll have to get into the uncle bit in a second. We spoke about it briefly just before we started recording, but I have to do a final introduction to the youngest of this ART trio and the driver closest to the 2022 F3 title of the three. He's a 2020 EuroCup champion, was the lead rookie in F3 last year and is a member of the Alpine Academy. So at the time of recording, at least, is probably in the running to replace Fernando Alonso. How are you, Victor Martin? Hi, Jim. Uh, yeah, I'm really good. Really, really nice to be here uh, talking to you with uh, Jim and, and Grégoire. So, yeah, thanks to, thanks to Jim for the invitation. You know, we, he asked me if, uh, if I was uh, happy to, to join him on, on the podcast. And uh, yeah, I said yes. So here we are. You have to follow the uncle's tips, right? So just exactly. a quick one. Let's get out of the way. Uncle Jim, we spoke about it. And it's not an age thing. It was a wisdom thing. Is that right? Um, I don't know. I, I ask, ask them. I don't know where that came from. Um, I don't remember too. Many. It was Victor that said that. Everybody found it hilarious. And, and now they call me that sometimes in, in the team. So, Victor, what, what, how did you come up with that? May I have... I don't remember exactly the, the time where I, I said that. But I think it was probably when, you know, we're saying stuff about our life, our experience. And then I said, yeah, thank you, Uncle Jam. And, uh, and that's, that's it, you know. He's like, I, I, would, I would not say he's like the, the dad of the team, but for example, he, he has yeah, so much experience and so much, so much advice and, and also, of course, bullshit to, to say between each other. But, uh, but yeah, it's how it, it came, you know, uh, a bit of love and, uh, and we all started to, to actually uh, um, I- say that. Actually, I don't know if you guys saw, but on, on the Twitter questions, Morgan yeah. replied, Morgan is Victor's racing. 
And he replied, uh, he was asking, JM, do you have any nicknames in the team? Obviously referring to the Uncle JM nickname. So Morgan, <laughs> if you're watching this, thank you for, for bringing that up. That's the quickest time we've ever got into the Ask F1 FS part of the podcast. Sorry, sorry. But that was, no, no, that's great. I tick that bit off. So Uncle JM and everybody else. We need to hear the nicknames for the other drivers. But lots to go through before we get to those uh, those questions. So as ever, a quick reminder to like, comment and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And you can also find our previous episodes and some great short videos on the rest of the channel. And if you're listening to the audio only version, please leave a review on whatever podcast platform you're using. You can leave a rating on Spotify and review us on Apple Podcasts. If you leave us a review, we'll read it out in the podcast next time. But a simple rating is just as appreciated. Thank you to everyone who rates and reviews us. It really does help us out. Now, I said last week that we want to spend more time with our audience's questions in our episodes now, but we can't have the drivers on and not talk about their races and seasons. So we have to talk about what I'd call a challenging, to put it nicely, weekend at Spa for the drivers joining me today. Let's tackle yours first, JM. It could have been silverware on Saturday, but a lap on puncture changed everything. And then on Sunday, you spent the race battling the championship contenders, but out of the points. How was the weekend from your perspective? Yeah, very disappointing. Um, I think it started off well in, in free practice. We had pretty pretty good potential, a yeah, good pace. Then the quali was very tricky as you saw so we we had to risk it put this licks and go out in a pretty much full wet uh, track and wait for it to dry so it was one of those sessions where you know the fastest lap time is going to be the last flying lap you do uh there's a lot of incidents going on a few yellow flags and a lot of um pressure to to do the lap without any mistakes while there's still a lot of damp spots around so I was actually, it's the happiest I've ever been to qualify P11, I think, because uh, I, I just kind of put the lap there and um, hope that I, it would at least get me to the top 12 without risking not finishing the lap. Uh, and and that was the case. So um, I, I was looking forward to the race on Saturday, starting P2. I thought uh, if, if I got a good start and passed him in, in lap one, I could win it. And it was all going to, to plan until the, the puncture, which was um a big shame a big shame because i think with the way that the race unfolded the safety cars i could have managed all of that uh quite well and, and probably won the race so disappointing and then sunday uh the feature race we just lack pace to to be honest we we know why um we maybe went in the wrong direction with with a setup and then yeah the whole race i was just battling and trying to to maintain position and try to be opportunistic with mistakes other people were doing but I did not have the pace of the championship contenders that were around me. So it was a little bit disappointing too. Would you call it fun at least on Sunday? Obviously Saturday was over before it really started, but you did. there was a lot of battling with a lot of good drivers around you. Was it a bit more fun at least? It was, I mean, look, I, I, always, I always have fun when I'm in the car. I've made that a point uh, since I got back after the accident that every time I'm hopping back into the car, I feel um, lucky to be there and, and, and I enjoy it. So yes, I, I, I of course enjoyed it, but I would have enjoyed it much more if I was going forward instead of dropping back a little bit. Um, but yeah, I had some good battles. I, I had some uh, good uh, blocking, especially against Victor's championship contenders. I didn't want to make life too easy for them. So a little bit of teamwork going on there. Oh, very good to hear. And speaking of Victor, you are in the title battle and when you are in the title battle not scoring points doesn't help the wet qualifying as we discussed made the weekend difficult but somehow you just didn't lose you didn't lose too much ground in the championship despite it all so quite fortunate possibly you also had an eventful start in the sprint race having to take to the escape road at Lacombe and then had some questionable driving let's call it by Kush Maney to end your feature race lap a uh, feature race on lap one a weekend to forget, or are you trying to take positives? Uh, I'm not sure it's a weekend to forget because I, I have seen um, many things there that I need to to work on. So to forget it will be a, a mistake from uh, from my side. But for sure, it's 
in terms of points, yeah, it's a weekend that you you need to to put that on the side. But after, I think we we have seen also some uh, some good stuff uh, with uh, with the team. How we we were in in FP, we we pointed uh, uh, our main problem to to resolve it for qualifying. I think we were uh, going to 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 the good direction, and then for sure in in quali with the with the damp uh, conditions, it was tricky. Uh, we, as JM said, you know, it's uh, the last lap which. Uh, will count. Uh, I, I did a mistake on my side. I just break a bit, a bit too late into uh, into Lecom and I went straight. And uh, and actually, when you don't do the last two laps in quali, you can forget to be uh, uh, in the top 12 with uh, with these uh, conditions. So that was just um, a simple mistake, you know, like it, it can it can happen. I was just trying to to not think about the championship just to to push and trying to be uh, in uh, at least in the top five, but then after after that, you know, when you start P24, uh, you also expose yourself to uh, to um, to crash with uh, with uh, with other people, to uh, maybe not uh, smart people around the track also. So it can really affect your uh, your races. I did again another mistake in uh, in the sprint race. I did a, a, a jump start, sorry, and uh, I was just you know trying to. To do a, a two good starts and not trying to just survive, survive there and uh, and maybe go forward and forward uh, lap after lap. After with uh, with the the contact I got into into Lecom uh, was was nothing. I was not having any issue with uh, with the car and uh, and then I got the drive through and and the, the race was over for me. And then into the feature race, you know, I really tried to. To, to get another approach of the of the race of the weekend of uh, of the championship also I, I really try to forget about everything uh, not to think about uh, what to do in the car I was just doing uh, I wanted to drive you know naturally like I like I know how to do and uh, and it was all all going perfectly until the the last chicane I was around p14 I think so 10 positions I made on on that first lap. And then I was just, uh, you know, at the wrong time uh, in the wrong uh, in the wrong place. So uh, I will say it's it's uh, the sherry on the cake <laughs> of, uh, of that weekend. But uh, but I want to stay positive because I I know how to approach the last two rounds. I know we have the potential. Uh, I know we have the car also to 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 win that championship. So uh, yeah, and I will keep pushing until the end. Yeah, you could have had a weekend like Teo in F2 and have your championship rival score a lot more points. So it's still yeah. very close. I mean, from the from a neutral perspective, watching this championship has been fantastic for the title fight. It's great to see you in it, but I no one knows who's going to win it. There could be somebody who's no. sitting way further down the, the order. So great to watch. Um, probably not so great to sit in, especially with that incident with Maney on the feature race after it's going so well. Finally, <laughs> Gregoire... You followed suit. You made it three from three disappointing F3 races um, for ART. Clearly, yeah. you didn't want to be left out of the fun. I'm sure I saw you going onto the grass at the start of the sprint race into La Source. And then your feature race came undone also at Lecom with contact exiting the chicane. Firstly, are you okay after your crash? And secondly, how much potential do you think you had this weekend? Yeah, first uh, I am okay. It was a uh, yeah quite a, a little crash, uh, I will say, but uh, was I am okay physically and ready to to go to go in Zandvoort. And uh, and yeah, like uh, like my two teammates say, uh, qualifying was really tricky. It was really easy to do some mistake. And um, and yeah, I did just did some uh, too much mistake in in qualifying. And uh, and after exactly when when we when we start in P19. It's really difficult to to come back at the top, and uh, and the first race, yes, I tried to to break late uh, late in um, in T one, and uh, just uh, Vidalis to push me on the grass. I think wasn't wasn't a good idea to go in uh, in the outside in T one. Was maybe better in to go in inside, and uh, but yeah, I finished P twelve. Um, wasn't the best race I had this year. And uh, and then the race two, uh, the start of the of the race was quite good. Um, for me, uh, the the car balance was looking good, not so much big. And then uh, I tried to 
to do uh, to do outside of T7 in um, in uh, in another drivers in Marty and uh, when I see that he was uh, pushing me outside I tried to lift off then uh, to let him by because I was short and I was faster than him and overtook him uh, in the in the lap before in the lap after but uh, but he just completely pushed me out and I and I just finished my race in the wall so wasn't uh, wasn't a good uh, good race a good weekend. But I am sure then, then we can come back stronger in, in Zandvoort and show uh, our real pace. Well, you had terrific weekend in Zandvoort last year. Are you hoping that that's is that something like you've got experience that you're there that you know that you are good at the track? Or was that possibly just more familiarity with the Freca car than you've got with the F3 car? Are you hoping for great things this weekend? I think it's both. Uh, I really like Zandvoort. Uh, I was really... How to say really confident with the Freca car uh, last year, uh, but I am sure that we can do a good weekend in Zandvoort because I really like this track. It's really technical. It's uh, turning everywhere every time. So, and uh, and the condition can change also. Uh, we can uh, we can have some some wind uh, can change a lot there. So I am pretty sure that we can uh, we can do uh, try to do the same than uh, than last year. Now, Formula 3 wasn't the only game in town this weekend, as Formula 2 got back underway for the triple header as well. Unfortunately for ART, it wasn't much better in F2 either, with Porsche losing significant ground in the championship and Vesti enduring another pointless weekend. Elsewhere, though, a driver took their first F2 feature race win, someone that I guess you'll know pretty well with your Alpine connections, Victor. Duan took a while to get going this season, but he's now P4 in the standings after taking the win from Felipe Drogovic. How did you rate his race? Did you see it? And how do you rate his season so far? You know, I think uh, Jack, I, I know him from, I think we all know him, especially also GM uh, from, from last year. We know how his style is in, in the car. And, uh, and every time we are watching his on boards, it's always, you know, a bit... Uh, on the edge of a steel side. And I think in F2, uh, maybe in the in the races, it can not be that good for the degradation. And I know that, uh, I mean, you know, I, I spoke a bit also to him and I think he, he really tried to make a, a big a big improvement on, on that side. And I think we could have, uh, we could have seen that uh, uh, yesterday, actually, uh, because if I think in, in, uh, in Spa, if you, you need to manage the degradation. If if you don't do that, if you don't manage to to do it well, uh, then you you are not winning the race or you are not finishing it well. So uh, it means that he he is improving on that side. And um, but yeah, after that also, I remember I was racing with him last year in Spa uh, with uh, for the win. It was more on the wet than on the dry, but uh, but for sure I think he has a. A special, uh, you know, uh, feeling with uh, with that track because I think he has done the other two two feature races uh, in a row in F3 and F2. So, uh, so yeah, let's see in the end what he will do because I think yeah, it's his first feature race win. He has done one in the sprint race, I think. Two, I think it is actually. Yeah, so he's he's he's, he's turned his season around. He joins a podcast, and all of a sudden his season gets better. What can I say? It's going to be the same for you guys. I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, I don't. You know, I don't know. I, I'm trying to to look F2 or to watch F2 also, but sometimes you you don't have the time. We are actually doing the debrief or doing the prep for for uh, for the race of uh, of the day after. Uh, I remember on on Sunday I I couldn't watch the middle of the race. I was actually surprised when Duan got past uh, Drukovic because I didn't see that because I think I was trying to to go to have dinner somewhere or or to leave the track. And uh, but yeah, I watched it in in replay and and then I understood how. Uh, he got there. Yeah, he's done so well this year. So congratulations to to Jack. I know he's continuing to rise. Uh, now, Gregoire, unlike your teammates, you don't have to do any PR talk for us or you know, championing any fellow academy drivers that you've got to, to look out for in Formula 2. Drogovic has surprised so many people this season and he hasn't won for 12 races, but he's still well in the lead. Is that meaning the dominance is a case of his high talent or do you think his rivals have failed to mount a championship challenge this year no i think uh, i think he's good he has 
quite uh, I think a big a big experience. But uh, but actually I don't know him really well. But uh, but I think he he showed this year a really good pace and uh, and we can see it also in the in the standing. Are you thinking then that the championship is his like he's wrapped it up at this point, or do you think there's any chance for anybody else? Uh, you know, in a championship, uh, everything can happen. So until the end, we he just need to to stay focused until the end. But for sure, with uh, with the gap he have now, I think uh, if he don't do uh, uh, if he don't do some mistake, he can uh, he can win it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think you know all about taking a big championship around the halfway point of the season, a championship lead, and then making that work for you at the end. Just one final thing. The day the podcast is released marks three years since the 2019 feature race that changed your life, JM. I feel we should address the anniversary of Antoine Hubert's death here, but I also feel that everything that needs to be said about the day has been said already. So I just want to send our thoughts out to the Hubert family. But I wanted to ask how it was for you to return this year and last year to Spa and just hear about some of the positives of how much recovery you've gone through since 2019. Yeah, it, it's been a ride, man. Um, obviously, every time I go back to Spa, it's quite emotional. Uh, not just for me, I think for the whole racing community, F2, F3. Um, we, we all see that that track in a different way now uh don't get me wrong we, we still love the track i i personally enjoy going back there and and racing in it and i'm happy to see it stay in the calendar but uh there there will always be the the memory of antoine together with that event and, and in my case of course uh, you know I, I was involved in the accident and it has uh, heavily impacted me you know it, it has changed my my life so going back there i, I must say last year was harder um just the actual driving again in the track, racing, um, <clears throat> you know, you start thinking about the risks a lot more. And, and that's something that in general has happened to me after the accident. All of a sudden you, I want to say you're more aware that you're exposing yourself to those risks. Whereas before I was kind of, maybe I didn't want to see it on purpose. I was trying to be ignorant to the fact that yes, we are driving cars that are very fast. Um, so, you know, when I, I went there last year, even during the race, I, I had a bit of thoughts about it. Uh, it didn't uh, impede me on, on, you know, going flat out and, and being a race car driver, but you do think about it. This year, I tried to um, take a little bit of a different approach, focus a lot more on the sporting side of it. Um, I didn't accept as many interviews and, and media stuff before the race because I knew that everybody wanted to talk about about the accident and last year was a little bit too too much for me um and this year it, it worked well you know i i was able to um kind of be just a driver during the whole weekend focus on on my job in the f3 focus on on my job with the team and uh enjoy it a, a little bit more with less kind of background noise and, and it was good um but as you said i know the day that this podcast come out is, is going to be the 31st of august so that's the three-year anniversary it's pretty crazy that it's already three years in some ways it feels like a lifetime ago in other ways it feels like it was yesterday um so yeah you know i i i, I do not mind talking about it because it brings back antoine's memories his legacy and we can um you know always remember him when, when we're talking about the spa. And um, I, I think everybody likes that. Just a quick thing, which I didn't plan to ask, but you just brought it up there. I think it's really pertinent that there's so much focus on your physical recovery, which has been tremendous to see. But the things you've mentioned there, just also, it's like a mental recovery. You're mentioning racing differently, but also when you're racing at that circuit, the scene of the accident, you've had to switch your focus. I presume you weren't rejecting interviews at Barcelona three years ago. It's, it's a total change. Has that made you into a better racer in general, do you think? Or are you just more mindful? I think it has made me a, a better person in general. Um, it, it has really changed me. Uh, you know, I know three years ago I was younger. I've uh, grown up. It's part of life. But 
I I truly believe I would have never grown up the way I have in in the last three years if the accident hadn't happened. Um, and and most of that has been positive. We, we were actually talking about this with Victor uh, last week in Spa. He asked me, you know, and it was a great question. He said, if of course, if Antoine hadn't passed away, if, if you would have been alone in the accident and you would have had the same injuries and the same kind of road to recovery that you've had, would you say the accident was overall a positive or a negative in, in your life? Um, and it, it was a great question because I, I've made the same question to myself. And, and I think in many ways, it has been more positive than negative to myself in the way it has forced me to view life, approach things, uh, be happy with less, appreciate the, the smaller things in life, you know, like be, be more open, etc. cetera. But um, Antoine did pass away. And of course, if I could go back to that day and, and, and do things differently, I think we, we would all do, of course. But, um, you know, just the way I've approached it. And like you said, the mental recovery was, was tough. It was long, but um, I've come out of the other end um, with, with certain positives that, that I take from that. And um, I'm proud of that uh, personally. That's enough questions for me because the F1 Feeder Series podcast is for you, viewers and listeners. We're going to move on to the hashtag AskF1FS part of the podcast. And like I said before, with the amount of questions that we don't get through, usually we're going to focus more on these with future episodes. If this is your first time watching or listening, you can get involved by using the hashtag AskF1FS on Twitter, joining our Discord and using the podcast questions channel, or simply commenting on our YouTube videos and asking whatever it is that's on your mind. First one here from Kiela Scott on Instagram, and it's a question for all of you. So let's do it, Gregoire, Victor, JM. Who's the best driver of the three of you? <laughs> of course, me. Eh? I won't say it as my teammate. Eh? Come on. Eh? Is but, that that's your answer? I think I think we have I three would. different. I think we have three different type of driving. Oh, we had the real uh, answer. Now we're getting the the press answer. A second one. What do you think about it? The politically correct yeah, no, the <laughs> answer. I think we are three good drivers when we are in this level. Uh, we are always, always at the top, so I think we are we are three really good drivers. After for sure, when you have a when you hear a driver, you are just uh, yeah the best in the in the mind. So so for sure, for me, I am the best, and I think uh, for them is the same. Uh, Victor is he's the best, and then Juan for him is the same. So, but uh, but yeah, I think we are three 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 really good drivers, and uh, that's the most important. Uh, Victor, you are leading the championship out of these three. Does that answer the question? <laughs> it's what I was going going to say. Let let's have a look on the on the <laughs> points. But was just no, just too low. No, I, in the end, I, I think Gregoire answered well. You know, we have we have, and it's the truth. We have actually three type of of style in the, on the driving style, and we we all have our strengths and uh, and weaknesses. And to be honest, we we really really help each other in the during debrief, uh, looking at data and and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, in the end, in myself, uh, I, you know, I say to myself that I, that I am the best. Like Hegwar said, he thinks he's the best, and and JM also he also. So in the end, uh, it's like that. JM, is Victor putting words in your mouth here that you were just going to say Gregoire's the best, or are you the best? No, I, 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 I know I'm the best, but it's <laughs> as, as they said. Um, I, I think any sportsman at this level, first of all, yes, we are all very good. I think we have um, the strongest lineup in F3. I, I believe that. Um, but you have to believe you're the best and you have to truly believe that, not just say that um, because you think that's the correct answer. Uh, and, and we are also, yeah, three very different drivers with different profiles, different experience, um, stronger areas in some cases, you know, th th there's nothing wrong in me saying sometimes I'll go and look at some of their data and I'm like, damn, uh, they, they did a better job and I need to learn from that. Uh, and I'm sure it's the same for them with me. So 
Um, overall, I think what's important in the context of Art Grand Prix is, yeah, we are working very well together. And I, I'm actually sad that the season is finishing soon because I feel like the longer we work together, the more efficient we get uh, as a team. Um, and I'm sure if we would have 10 more rounds, uh, we, we could do some some great things. So um, also, as you said, Victor is leading the championship. So he has done the better job this year. And uh, kudos to him. You know, we, we, we recognize that and we are here to support him as well in his championship campaign. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's a good lineup. I, I've been with many teammates in, in uh, my career and uh, I've enjoyed this year very much so. Three talented drivers, I echo that. Just following up on what you said there as well, uh, JM, that this is a question from Justin230105, rolls off the tongue on Instagram. Question to Gregoire and JMC, are you going to help Victor win the championship? Let's go with you first. I am home, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with you first, Gregoire. So how Victor help me? The other way, other um, way around. Are you going to help Victor win the championship? Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think GM helped for his experience and me. Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, I am still a, quite a, a good driver. So I think when you are good drivers and you are fast in a track, you can you can see with. Or to say, um, you can help every drivers, and for me, I can learn from every drivers. Uh, I don't well, know if, I think, uh, if Greg, you understand. I think, I think he means like, are are you going to help him now? In the, yeah, in the I, last I, are you going to go in when you see Behrman or Hajar? Are you just going to crash into them? Ah, sorry, <laughs> not crash, not crash. We we, we have respect. And we if you respect. do that by accident. They will look yeah, at this yeah. podcast and they'll say, "See, no, you no, no, yeah, no, I no, cr no crush." <laughs> uh, I think no, no, no. We don't need to crush with the other, but I think we can. Uh, we can still thanks, defend. Thanks for part. clarifying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but I think we can still defend quite a lot uh, with them, and I'm pretty sure. And if I can uh, slow it down, for example, Ajar or Birman or or Arthur. I think I will do it because uh, we need to to help uh, our teammate, and uh, if I can uh, I can slow down, uh, I will defend a lot. So yeah, I will help me help him. We saw you, <laughs> JM, already do some of that this uh, this last weekend. Is that something you're going to see more of in the next two rounds? Um, if, I, if I the opportunity I'm, comes around, should I say? I, I hope. I hope. Um... I hope I'm not in that position again. I, I am known to be quite hard uh, defender, so I think people uh, know that it's not going to be easy. And and it, it, it's not nothing personal. It's nothing. I mean, of course, if I can give Victor a hand like I did in in Spa, I will. But I would do the same with any other driver. Uh, I'm not going to let anyone pass. But I, I think the best way we can help him for the last two rounds is just to keep lifting the team up, make sure we get all three cars inside the the top ten in in quality. Uh, because once we're fighting up there, you know that's that's the best way to 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 help him. And and like Greg was saying in, in the beginning, um, we we help each other just by giving each other data, tip, tight, open um, communication channel. Um, and I I really believe that if we if we do a good job for for the next two weeks, he will not need any of our help, and 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 he will take the championship on his own merit as he has done uh, the whole year. Yeah, it's crazy to think two weeks away and that's the, the season absolutely ran. Um, a question about the season finishing as well comes from, well, I wonder who they support. The JM Korea Hungarian fan page. What are your plans for next year is one question, obviously to you, JM. And they also bit, I also asked, and you need to clarify this bit, they're also curious about whether one liked the Langos or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... I, I don't know what my plans are for next year yet. It's a little bit early. Uh, of course, I'm looking at options in F2, but there are other opportunities out there as well. Maybe endurance, uh, maybe going to America, but it's it's still a bit early. I think we'll know more in uh, two or three months. Mm. So 
I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on that. And then the langos, I unfortunately could not try it. Um, so I know it's a, a typical Hungarian dish. Uh, and they were telling me before the weekend that I, I should try it. But uh, no, you know, we most of the time we eat in the in the catering at, at the racetrack. Um, so I, I didn't get the chance. If I do F2 and I'm back in Budapest next year, I'll make a, a better effort to to try it. That's a, that's a promise there, a JM promise. Um, I love when we get to the feed part of the F1 <laughs> feed series podcast. It's not the first time we've gone down that route. There's a question for all of you, but let's just focus it on you for the moment, Victor, which is from Kieran slash Mega on Twitter. How do you think the F3 cars will do around Zandvoort? They will do really, really well because I think we, I mean, I raced there, so, so for sure I know how how it is i love that track you know uh, it's uh, it's really technical uh, fast corners with uh, with banking um, it's also really really physical uh, so i think uh, we we will be a bit tired in the end of the yeah. of the races so uh, but yeah overall i think it's a really difficult track to to get used to it to to go you know at the limits and and deliver the close to to the perfect lap you know in in quali and then uh, in the in the races i think to be honest last year I was really surprised how we could uh, overtake overtake actually during the i think was in race 2 where the we had headwind into oh. turn 1 so actually the the DRS was uh, was really really strong so i was uh, i was quite surprised uh, how uh, we could stay really close to each other and um, and battle uh, battle a lot uh, at the top or behind or you know uh, there was a lot of uh, of moves from uh, from the field so I hope uh, it will be the same uh, and uh, and I know that I mean I know for sure I will enjoy it uh, I will enjoy it maybe more than than the others because I really like the track but uh, but yeah let's see I'm really looking forward to go there. I had your sprint race, well, one of the sprint race wins there last year, didn't you, as well? Um, a question which I probably should have got you to think about beforehand. So the first person I'm going to ask it to is JM, because I feel that you'll think of an answer quickly with your older slash wiser brain here. That is from Law via Twitter. Can you describe each of your teammates with three words? So... I'm going to JM first, then I'm going to Gregoire, and then I'm going to Victor. <laughs> Three words describe your teammates. All right. So for Greg, I would say shy, uh, methodical, um, and measured. Hmm. Yeah. Measure? What, measured. What you like um, he will touch the water before jumping inside, you know, like. He, he likes to be sure of, of what he's doing before he does it. That's a great example, by the way. <laughs> and, and for Victor, um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Victor, Victor, Victor. I mean, I could do this. This is this. Is, you know him way better than I do. I, I couldn't do this. <laughs> Yeah, but I've seen it's more tired. sides of him than you have. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I think Victor is maybe more uh, passionate. You know, he he is French. You can you can see the the Frenchness in him. I think Greg, being Swiss, he's a little bit more calm, measured. As I said, Victor has a little bit more fire in him. Um, he is aggressive i think and and i don't mean that in a, in a bad way but it, it, you know kind of what's the opposite of measured but i don't want to see say like crazy because obviously you know and i'm talking more driving but he's the kind of guy that um you will see at his first push lap in, in fp and sometimes he's already over the limit in one of the fast corners so you know he he, he sends it um and third I would say mature. I, I think Victor is quite mature for his age. Um, you're 20 years old, Victor, 21? 21. 21. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've, I've had some pretty interesting conversations with you, which is surprising because uh, many drivers are, are not 
that uh that switch on when it's things are outside of racing so um yeah mature uh, aggressive and uh, what was the last one and the first one i said uh, you said uh, mature aggressive and god i forgot myself i was just thinking did i say the first one <laughs> Uh, passionate. 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 French. <laughs> French is a word. French, French passion. <laughs> Good answers. Good answers. Which means the pressure is on Gregoire to do the same for your two teammates. Um, yeah. I'm expecting uh, a measured response here. Yeah. No, I will start with GM. Uh, I think he's uh, how to say uh, a, a person who helped the the other really really easily and uh and that's a really good thing for him i don't know the word of uh, of that but just uh yeah just uh, he he easily uh, helps uh, the other so it's really it's really good for for him um then uh i will say uh don't, don't give me that <laughs> I search because I have some something but I won't say it uh, quite a aggressive person in the whole I think he say also but uh, in a good way mm -hmm. uh, not in a bad way and uh, and also he's really really calm before a session uh, Wait, not he's... He sing like crazy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but of course he sing quite a lot when he come uh, to, for example, when we change. Uh, he's quite a good singer sometimes. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's really difficult to, yeah, but it's really difficult to to search who who I will say. But uh, and now Victor, uh, I think he's uh, really, how to say, he's always. Uh, searching what he can do better, uh, always, uh, yeah, always thinking uh, to what he can do better, and uh, then second, uh, I don't know how to say, but everything is really clean. Like when uh, he put mm, all yeah. his stuff, nothing is in a what like perfection. Say? I think yeah, the perfection, perfection or... exactly. It's mm. what uh, I was searching. I'm crazy. I'm yeah, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> but uh, then uh, third, I think. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's hard. Huh? Ah, it's quite hard. Huh? You know which one I would say also for Victor? Go on. Ah, you can help mo me. Huh? Mo mo moti motivated, I would say. Yeah. You know, That's like right. yeah. he pushes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's nice. That's, that's a good example there of Gregoire saying helpful for, for JM as well. That you oh, JM, yeah, it's what, I, so it's what I was saying, exactly what I was saying. And Victor, you, well, people have been it's, speaking it's, glowing it's quite, about you. It's quite hard, to be honest. I, I, will, I will be honest because the, these things, I, I really struggle sometimes to put words on, on, you know, like the, the character of, of the people. But for sure, for, for, for Gregoire, I will need to to say the same as a, as one which is shy, for sure because I think everyone everyone say says that to uh, to Grégoire, uh, but which is not a bad thing I would say. Huh? It's uh, it's uh, it's you know it's him. You when you see Grégoire is you know a bit shy and on his on his side looking looking around what is going on and um, and Rex. Yeah, no, but I speak not not in the. Not uh, not for sure in the car. I would say more yeah. outside of, of motorsport or or with the team and, and uh, stuff like that. Um, second, it's hard to to choose. I mean to to find first. Um, You've had the longest time to think about this also as well. The, also, really, I would say really professional. Mm -hmm. you know, like looking. Um, yeah, I, I would say really professional. He he really. Uh, Listen to to everyone, to uh, to to myself, to Juan, to uh, to every guy in uh, in the in the team. So I would say that professional. And um, the last one, the last one is is something funny because every time it's it's the same every morning. Yeah, before, I was thinking that you were before <laughs> the before uh, before he's not on time. He's earlier than being early. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> or wait, there has not been a single day at a track when I'm always arriving on time. Every time I walk into the truck, Greg is already there sitting down, the chair. chilling, the chair. Just waiting for everybody. And there is, I think there is, there is one word which can describe this is the punctual, re respectful, also, mm. you know, like to, yeah. I think he doesn't want to, to be late yeah. because he thinks that it's, it does, it means he will not respect. Uh, 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 the the engineers uh, us maybe waiting for him I don't know like uh, that's true yeah. I can yeah, attest I that he was the first driver of the three of you to be here for the podcast as well so another example yeah. of you telling the truth and for, <laughs> and for it's G quite funny because yeah go on go on I was gonna say and for JM as well I, with the free the free attributes that you described for for JM um, uncle no I would say I would say crazy but in a good way like i think because of of what happened in in, in the past he's just enjoying his life like mm. in uh in every way uh on the on the motorsport side uh, i have sp spoken with him about also uh, stuff outside of motorsport and he just enjoy life you know like in a in a in a good way so crazy but like Like crazy in a good way, you know, like uh, he's just living life to the full. What, I understand. What, yeah, exactly. Um, second, I don't know, man. The, You've had 10 minutes, people. Victor. You've had 10 minutes. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I would also say on the, on the driving side, aggressive because, mm -hmm. and I, I got surprised in a in spa because it was actually the the first time where uh, i think you will remember one where i was uh, i asked him wow why you were not like, like me at the limit on the on the first push you know like sometimes in the fast corner yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes him me i i think that i'm at i am at the limit and there is one you know like above you and i'm like I cannot. I cannot do that on the on the first push or even even after. So I would say uh, uh, aggressive also, and um, and you know he wants to to be straight on the on uh, on point uh, in quality. I think the, the team and, uh, and I think that the team he has been in, in the past. They they probably know him that from the from the first push he's uh, he's there even if he has uh, no experience on that track. I remember Bahrain. Bahrain was. Uh, When he came back from, uh, he couldn't do the the pre uh, pre season test there or the first. I didn't uh, do the first two days. First two or, days, I think. Yeah. He arrived the third day, and you were like two tenths, yeah, two tenths of uh, of us. My first and push. I was like, <laughs> uh, we are in the shit, you know, like <laughs> like uh, after uh, two days of testing and him arriving to the to the to the track, uh, yeah, was uh, was quite impressive. And then the third one, uh, I don't know, to be honest. Really funny. I would say a, a funny guy that I like to spend time with. Like even outside of, of the track, I would like to, you know, uh, yeah, have a, friend, uh, have a friend like him. That's lovely. All three of you. I was expecting And some like, sort of, I don't know, more negative, not negative, but, you know, joking stuff. But the three of you just seem to be in love with each other. It's so warm to see. I will... I will I will cut you because uh, I heard James say, saying that before. Uh, I think it was today. I was actually thinking of, well, we are going to the last two rounds and it's mm. going to be the end. You know, like uh, we, we don't know where we, we are going to be next year, uh, if we will be teammate or not, or, or in, uh, in F2, in endurance or whatever. But I was actually thinking of, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit sad, like, uh, Like he said, we if we were having 10 rounds again, I think we will be probably uh, again a lot stronger than what mm. we are now because we we have a great relationship and a great understanding about what is going on uh, in the team. Harmonious within the team. As one thing that I learned, we talk about the deaf experiences, is that you don't or you usually don't know you're in the good times until the good times are over. But I feel that the three of you have got this unique opportunity to know these next two weeks are the good times and you can enjoy every second of it so really positive stuff here I'm enjoying this um 
That took a while though. So I'm going to go quickly through some of these other questions here. Morgan TRL, and I think you guys know about this one, wants to know, do you have a nickname in the team? Now, JM, you spoiled it a little bit with the uncle. So, well, you didn't spoil it, but the uncle thing came out early. How about the other two drivers? Victor, Gregoire, do you have a nickname within the team? Actually, uh, I don't know. Huh? I don't think so. I mean, no, oh, Victor, they call him Victor and Greg. Gregoire is Greg. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just... Greg, but he's not a nickname. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? No. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I mean, the only, the they, only... they all have in the team. They, yeah, they all actually within have. the mechanics and, and even the engineers, everybody has, has a, a nickname. Sometimes you never you don't even know the, the, real, the real name, name. of the guy. Yeah. I, I there are some mechanics <laughs> on the team that I couldn't tell you their legal name. I just know their nickname. And I've been at the team for two years. So yeah, <laughs> it's a big nickname, but actually Victor and Gogno. I don't think we have I don't think we have a nickname. No. No. no, I mean we have our our type of you know uh, character, which is me all, always late. But this is the you know yeah, Vitor jokes. is going with the, 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 the late world. You know, like Vitor is <laughs> Victor is late. You know, like when you but, think about Victor, you think about him him late or just on time. <laughs> just on time, Victor Martin. I like that. Um, mm. <clears throat> I. Well, I want to ask a question, but I'm also embarrassed to ask a question from Callum 2021, because ever since you became a, a driver on my radar, Gregoire, or Greg, it's such a cool name, I think. But they've asked the question, I just want to know what Source's favourite source is. And <laughs> I'm sorry to ask it, but it's a, it's a fucking no, great no. question. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the first time that I heard this I question. Uh, actually, uh... <laughs> actually i don't know but i i will say um i don't know if you know it it's samurai Samurai. it's a piquant piquant mm -hmm. sauce it's, a spicy it's, like a, it's a sauce. like you know it's like a, a, a spicy mayo no a spicy mayo mm. say, yeah. i will say it is one but just for the fun <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad I, you have I, I, yeah, I, I saw it. I was like, I don't want to ask it, but I no, really no, also no, want to ask problem. it. Uh, you know, I am not, uh, yeah, or to say uh, angry about that. Uh, you need to, to take fun about my name and, and that's it. Uh. There's nothing fun about it. It's just a fun question. And when you're a world yeah. champion, I can just say to say to my, my friends, oh, I asked him about the, the name when he was younger. So I've got that off my bucket list now. Um, there's another, well, there's a bunch of questions, uh, but we're going to have to skip through some of them. Just a quick, well, depending on how quick it is. From Korea, Hungary, love you from Hungary, it seems, uh, JM. How is ELMS compared to F3? Is it more or less physical, et cetera? Now, you were meant to be doing the ELMS season, but I don't know what the actual situation is. So you did the test, right? I, I did a few preseason tests in the LMP2, but they were private tests with Prema. Um, so, yeah, I have a bit of experience in the car. Uh, and then because of my fracture in Bahrain, I missed the first two rounds of the ELMS. So the plan was I would do four out of six rounds of, of the championship, the ones that didn't clash with F3. But I missed the, the first two that I was supposed to do. So I, I will just do the last two, which are two weeks after Monza and then three weeks after that, uh, which will be Spa and uh, Portimao. So I'm looking mm. forward to that. And the car, it's it's less physical. The LMP2 is less physical than the F3. You have power steering, and the the brake pedal is uh, quite a bit softer. So overall, I would say it's uh, an easier car to drive. Huh, interesting. I uh, I can't even comprehend the differences you have to go through with them. But imagine just being closed cockpit is a different kettle of fish entirely now <clears throat> again i mentioned before we'll go through as many questions as possible and we've really not done that but i've got a bunch of quick fire questions so what i think we'll do is we'll have them go through jm then greg then victor to answer them one by one and if you want to expand feel free to but the first one comes from libs and they want to know if you could only race at one track for the rest of your life, where would it be? Actually, Spa for me. Mm -hmm. I think it has a bit of everything. Greg, I think I will say uh, I will say Barcelona. Oh wow! 
because it's more or less the same than uh, say the Juan, but uh, there is all type of corner, there is in kind uh, kind of degradation. So yeah, the Barcelona. Yeah. Victor, probably is on board. Oh wow, those are yeah, those those aren't answers I expected here at all. Spar I did, but the other two, surprising. Spa, um, I mean, uh, for me, Zonvorto, I would say Monaco, which I really, really like. Hmm. Like, I historical. See. I love uh, street circuits, so um, I don't know. I, I'm in love with, uh, with that track. It's, uh, sure. it's, I imagine it's great to drive. Not so fun to watch all the time, though. Uh, similar sort of question from Greg Drow via Discord. What's a track you want to race on that you haven't driven yet? JM. Jeddah. Jeddah? Huh. Jeddah. Um, yeah, I like street circuits as well. Um, it looks real sketchy, and I don't know how long, <laughs> how long it'll stay in the calendar, so I want to I wanna have a go before <laughs> they take it off. <laughs> and you'll probably set the fastest lap on your first push lap as well when you oh, are in sure. practice, yeah? That's, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Risky. Uh, Greg, do you have a track that you've not raced on yet that you'd like to? Uh, yeah, maybe it can be uh, it can be next year, but it would be Melbourne. Mm. Uh, Melbourne, it looks uh, really nice. And if you've played the F1 games, as I presume you did as a child, it's always a first track you race on, so you get lots of experience yeah, of course, on yeah. it. <laughs> I already did some laps in Melbourne <laughs> in the F1, yeah. I'm certain in my gaming career, that's the track I've done the most laps on ever, <laughs> because it's always a first track. How about you, Victor? Uh, I think it will be a bit... You know, surprising. I have, I have two actually. It's Jeddah, like like one, because like really fast corners with with walls really uh, close to you. And the other one is is Baku. I really want to go there and try it. That's a yeah, a sick track. It's it's my yeah. favorite track, I think. Like to go to go to I don't know with uh, with the F the F one. I think they go to three sixty three sixty five or something like yeah. this. And in it's the F2, like three, wow. almost three thirty in, in the slipstream. Yeah. It's really fast. So I want I want to go there. There there are some nice nice uh, sections, to be honest. Ah, street circuit specialist Victor Martin. That's what I'm hearing here. Good answers again. Complete change of subject of these ones. But Ashley via Discord, what's your favorite type of cheese? Camembert. <laughs> cheese. Camembert. Camembert cheese. That's a good answer, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, me, I have. I have. I have mine. Greg? You say, you, you <laughs> I think like I am a Swiss uh, person. I would say the fondue. Uh, it's, uh, hmm. I don't know what to say. There is, kind of, there is a type of, uh, type of uh, cheese. is Vacherin for the fondue. I will, I will show you mine because I think you don't know. I mean, I'm, Victor's I'm in a show and tell me. now. I can't wait for the people yeah, listening to the podcast you know, to get this. Greg, you will, you will know it. It's Caprice des Dieux. Ah, yeah, but to say in, uh, in English, no, I don't no. know. I, I will show you on the. You can you can tell they're they're French, eh, Kim? This, this is very very. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> this that? one. Capri. <laughs> it's it's a kind of uh, of cam camembert, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Re, remade. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Very it's uh, I, I, it's not. Uh, I didn't put. Uh, how do you say? Uh, you know, when you are sponsored, that's <laughs> not. Uh, <laughs> They're not backing. <laughs> <laughs> They're not sponsoring you. Not not no, yet. No, After not, this. Yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. <laughs> that one, I think that that cheese, I eat. I eat it at least two times. Uh, two times a day. What? Six times yeah. a day? But <laughs> not not the full not the full uh, the full one, you know, not the full uh, the full package. But yeah. at least two pieces per day. Every day I eat. when I'm home, I love it. That's uh, that's a rest literally the recipe for success is to eat two yeah. of those every single day. But very good. Um you can tell Victor that you love food as well. Like, you start to get that passion yeah. coming out that I heard so much about. You you um, remember it. I do, I remember when we spoke before. This one's from Canadian Josh. Um yeah. I'm hoping you all have the same answer to this because I have strong views. Do you sleep with socks on or off? Off. Off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
There's disbelief on JM's face there for anybody who is listening. That would be a bad night if I sleep with uh, socks on. It, it means something <laughs> bad, uh, <laughs> bad happens there. If yeah. I'm sleeping with socks on, it's because I've had a heavy night's drinking the night before and my entire clothes are you on. Didn't, you on. didn't arrive to the socks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, never got that far. Um, this is a classic question from Tom Evans Photos via Discord. What colour is your toothbrush? To what? The your toothbrush. The um, blue. Toothbrush. Ah. Yeah, mine, mine is uh, baby blue. Baby blue. Baby blue. Yeah. Blue. Gray. Baby blue, blue, like uh, soft blue. Yeah. But I mean, I change my toothbrush every month. Right now it's baby blue. Oh, mine was... is blue. blue. You I, all have blue I... toothbrushes. Yeah. <laughs> are ART giving but, out blue toothbrushes? What's going time? on? <laughs> like since you are since you are young or not because me since i'm born i was born blue i, I didn't change for my entire life uh, until now you've had the same toothbrush your whole life no mate come on <laughs> you keep buying a blue one no but i think i for many many years i still have the 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 shape you know the same one but uh, i i renew it you know that's but toothbrush I loyalty from victor martin yeah. there toothbrush wow. that's I didn't expect first that. Trying, first, he's trying to get a cheese, a sponsorship, now a toothbrush sponsorship. Blue toothbrushes yeah. only. Yeah. Impressive. Well, you need a, need a blue toothbrush to brush all that cheese no, away. You need to have a twice white a teeth, huh? <laughs> to get white teeth. Uh... Okay, well, this is a final question. Um, and it's specific, actually, to Juan from Vishred via Discord. Which podcast do you like more? the F1 Feeder Series podcast or a certain F2 driver's food-themed podcast? <laughs> uh, I mean, in, in the other podcast, they gave me wine, so... <laughs> uh, no, I, I think two different, two different dynamics, you know? Marcus's podcast is uh, more of a hangout. We're, we're, you know, I've known him since we were kids. Um, so yeah, two two very different dynamics. This one is definitely more uh, politically correct, I would say. That one oh, is. I, I don't force anything. You say whatever you want. No, no, no. Yeah, but you know the the the, the vibes, and and I think he gives his guests wine or alcohol on purpose to get them to talk about things they wouldn't talk about normally. So I actually I did a good job, I think, in in my episode by you know trying to remain a bit professional. But um, no, uh, different, different, different vibes. I, I enjoy both. I have a question. You get you get only one one drink or no or more? No, no. Uh, like, as, as you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it can it, it can end badly. Or... It can. Yeah. Normally, that's when they stop the podcast, <laughs> and that's when you wake up the next day with socks on, and you realize that's what's happened. <laughs> Correct. Well, I imagine we can see Victor and Greg joining Marcus's podcast soon when he's just found out that I, he can have his he unlimited drinks. He, no, but he asked me uh, in, uh, I think it was Silverstone, when, yeah. uh, because he, he, was, he asked me because I think there was a problem with, with uh, one driver and we were actually in the, in the F3 and F2 catering and uh, I was with uh, Clem, Clem on Novarek, and, uh, and he was there also and he asked me, uh, when when I should join and and I said I don't know you know for it was still still uh, still new mm -hmm. so I was I wanted to see how how it was if it was it if it was not you know like too much too funny and not enough professional but um, no I think uh, if he proposed me uh, I will see because he I think he does it in London no if I mean. he does it everywhere I did mine in, in everywhere Budapest. um okay. You know, we, we, we all have an image to to take care of. So we always yeah. try to measure things before we do them. Um, but I think as you get a bit older, you also, like Victor said about me, you start to enjoy <laughs> life a little bit more. You care a bit less about the political stuff. But um, yeah, I, 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 I find it funny that he's doing it and I, I support it. And, and you as well, James, this has been great. So thank you.
Oh, thank you. That means that means a lot. But yeah, we do support it as well. There's room. There's plenty of room in the world for feeder series podcasts, and it's a it's a great thing that Marcus is doing. We just need to get him on the podcast now. The the podcast collaboration the feeder series world wants to see. Yeah. But I imagine we'll see Victor <laughs> and Greg joining that other podcast pretty soon. Now they know that uh, unlimited alcohol is available. But <laughs> from no. now, from our side, Zero that's, <laughs> that's all the time we have this week. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. If you'd like to have your question asked on a future episode, use the hashtag AskF1FS on Twitter. Drop any questions below if you're watching on YouTube or let us know what questions you have on your mind on our Discord. Look for the podcast questions channel. If you are watching on YouTube, dropping a like on the video, leaving a comment and subscribing all really helps us out. And if you are listening, leaving a review on the podcast platform you're listening on is greatly appreciated. Finally, check out f1feederseries.com for more feeder series insights and follow F1 Feeder Series 1, F1 FS Americas and F1 FS Live on Twitter. You can find the links to all of those plus the Twitter accounts for myself and everyone else on the podcast in the YouTube description or the podcast show notes. Until next time, we have been the F1 Feeder Series podcast. Goodbye. Goodbye.